All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, TwinGate sponsored this video on how to set up a Raspberry Pi as a TwinGate server. This allows you to connect to the Raspberry Pi, any resources behind it, and even other things on the network without having to do port forwarding or anything like that. TwinGate is a really cool VPN-like app that essentially allows you to have pretty much remote access to any devices you'd like all without really worrying about all the complex VPN configuration because you can have multiple things in multiple sites and routing will be handled automatically. It's very similar to a VPN, but it is actually different. Instead of doing the entire networking, instead it's almost like there's encrypted port forwarding for every single device and every single specific device that is just handled without you ever doing anything and you don't need port forwarding. So today, I'm gonna be setting up how to connect to a Raspberry Pi. And for this, we're gonna be using a Git T server. So if you wanna manage your Git repositories remotely, using TwinGate. And we're gonna be able to connect to this from wherever in the world, as long as we're online, without port forwarding. All right, and so the first thing you need to go ahead and do is just log into TwinGate and set up an account. Very straightforward. I've also already installed this on my Mac. So TwinGate is installed on my Mac. It's incredibly easy very easy to go ahead and just you download it from the app store and sign in and that's where we're at right now and so then i've also got a raspberry pi that's on a separate vlan so right now connect to that vlan with this wire but if i unplug it like i just did i would not be able to access this so we're going to use that to kind of simulate the internet so right now i am plugged in the network well once it comes back up i will be able to connect to my git t server and be able to do everything but as you saw, once I unplugged it, I was not able to access it because I've disabled inter VLAN routing on this device. And so what this is doing is it's just simulating the internet. And so if we can connect to it on a separate VLAN, we'll be able to connect to it anywhere in the world on the internet. All right, and so now setting this up is gonna be very straightforward. And we're actually gonna be using one of their great guides right here and talking through it. So we're going to be using this as a Docker node. And so, the first thing we need to go ahead and do is just install Docker on our Raspberry Pi. This is the only thing you need to install ahead of time. And so we're just gonna do that here. And the way you do that is you just paste in this. So this is essentially just saying, hey, go to getdocker.com, which makes it really easy to do everything. Pull that code and run it in shell. Only do this for domains you trust. We should trust Docker, but this is executing code. And so now it's just automatically going to install Docker for us. It is great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that run. And after we're done, we will have Docker installed on our Raspberry Pi and we can go ahead and start installing our TwinGate network. All right, and so now we've got Docker installed, just that easy. Now we need to create a connector. A connector is essentially used to allow resources on a remote network. So that means you're able to use this connector to access things, if you set it up, that are not actually installed TwinGate on. So say I had another Synology on my network, I could use the connector on the Raspberry Pi to connect to that if I set that up and wanted to. So that's one thing, you don't have to have it running on every single device. So we're gonna go ahead and add a connector and we're just gonna do that in the admin portal. So we just sign in and for remote networks, we just need to go ahead and create a new remote network. We're going to say it's on-prem and we're going to call it Pi. So this is our Pi network. You could also call it your home network, that's probably easier. But now we just need to go ahead and create a new connector. And so the connector is used as that bridge that allows you to connect to various things. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy the connector and we are going to use Docker. So now TwinGate uses access tokens for authentication. So what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and generate these tokens. And we have to authenticate again. And so now we have new access tokens. I will be deleting these before posting this video. And now we do not need to do anything here. Now, if you do have a custom DNS server, you can work with that, but we're just gonna be using IP address for resolving everything here. So now we just need to go ahead and copy this guy right here and run it. We do need to add a sudo to the front of it. So we're just gonna copy it. All right, and so now we just need to add sudo in front and paste it in there and everything is automatically set up. As you can see, there's a lot of characters in there and those are our access tokens. 
And so this way we don't have to deal with authentication and everything like that. Instead, it's all done ahead of time, which is awesome. So now we can go ahead and open it on up and we should be able to see that the connector is automatically added in to Twingate. So let's go ahead and check that out. So we can see the controller right here is connected. All right, and so now that we've got the connector, all we need to do is add a new resource. So we'll go into network and add a resource. And for the network, we're going to choose that Pi network that we just set up. And now we've got two different options. For most home users, unless you're running your own DNS server and have your own domain name, you're probably going to go for a IP address. So I'm using that and I'm just going to copy that IP address right here. You will want this to make sure to be a static IP address. This does not work with just standard host names. Well, you probably could get it to work with host names with DNS, but would not recommend that. So now we've got our Git server running and we can also just set it to ports. So we can say they only have access to port 3000. So now this is a resource we will be able to connect to. So let's go ahead and just add that resource. And we can say who has access to it. Since I'm just one user, everybody, but if you have a company, you can say exactly what team or what user has access to what resource. All right, and so now, essentially we are online and we should just be able to connect to it. So now, let's go ahead and refresh the page. Works. But now, let's leave our tunnel. So now, I'm no longer on that VLAN. Instead, now, I'm essentially just on the internet because there's no connection in between these two. We refresh. And just like that, it worked. It is very easy to go ahead and set this up for every single device and every single resource you'd like. We can also see that if we kill Twingate, we are no longer gonna be able to connect. That's because this IP address does not exist on this network. It only exists with the Twingate tunnel. Just had to go ahead and re-authenticate. And just like that, it connected. This is all we had to do because Twingate manages everything behind the scenes. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any other tutorials like me to check out in the comments below. And thanks for Twingate for sponsoring this tutorial. All right, have a good one. Bye.